For many years, geothermal heat pumps have offered premium reliability and extremely low monthly operating costs. However, such systems have often been financially out of reach for many homeowners. Ingram's Water and Air has overcome this price barrier by offering a professional level geothermal heat pump kit that any individual with basic handyman type skills can install to harness the awesome heating and cooling power of the earth. I recently completed installation of two geothermal heat pump kits in my 4300 square foot home. In this video, I will discuss the technical aspects associated with the self-installation of a 4-ton horizontal closed loop kit. The first step is to swap your existing furnace with the geothermal heat pump provided by the kit. Then use flex duct and sheet metal to connect your existing ductwork to the air in and air out ports on the new unit. The next step is to run 100 amp electrical service to a sub-panel located near the heat pump. This will supply the electricity needed to run the unit as well as other peripherals. The next step is to hook up the plumbing. Since the system is non-pressurized, you can use Schedule 40 PVC pipe to direct the flow of antifreeze through the flow center to the heat pump, back out to the loop field supply manifold, through the earth, back through the return manifold, and finally back to the flow center. Notice that the heat pump and the loop pump are plumbed such that the heat pump can be bypassed. This is important later on when it is time to fill the loop field. Also, now is the time to plumb the hot water generator to your existing hot water heater using CPVC and copper pipe. The next step is to lay out the high density polyethylene pipe that will be buried in the earth. This is crucial because it allows you to precisely plan where you are going to bury your pipe. For this, you will need to construct a pipe jenny like the one shown. It is simply a wire fence jenny available from any farm store that has been slightly modified to accept large rolls of pipe. Remember, you need to drag the pipe away from your house and then back again, leaving some service loop to hook up the supply and return manifolds. Next, it is time to add the distilled water and propylene glycol antifreeze into the loops. Distilled water is available in one gallon jugs from any grocery store or big box mart. Bear in mind that you will need approximately 3 gallons per 100 feet of pipe. In order to maximize the effectiveness of the flushing process, it is necessary to bypass the heat pump and close all but one loop at the supply and return manifold. Note that the loop pump needs to be wired directly to its own circuit breaker on the electrical sub-panel. This enables the flow center to be operated independently of the heat pump. Next, simply pour the liquid into the flow center, being careful not to let the pump run dry. You will know you have filled the loops when liquid starts coming out of the topmost pipe inside of the flow center. Repeat this step for each of the loops. Once this is accomplished for all four individual loops, it is necessary to open all of the loops and let the flow center run continuously for 24 hours to purge out all of the air bubbles and allow you to carefully inspect for leaks. Once this is complete, you may wire the loop pump to the heat pump so that it turns on with the compressor. Now it is time to start digging. You will need a tractor loader backhoe or an excavator to dig the four trenches required for this install. Do not let these machines intimidate you. They can be obtained from any local rental company. If you have never operated one of these machines before, take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with their operation and take your time digging. If you are a new operator, stick to level ground until you are comfortable with the machine. For the installation of a 4-ton geothermal heating system, you will need to dig four trenches approximately 400 feet long by 3 feet wide by 6 feet deep. I found that it is best to work in 100-foot segments, meaning that every 100 feet I would stop digging and lay the pipe in the ground. When doing my installation, I secured the pipe to the bottom of the trench with fascia bricks. Remember, never to enter an open trench without a shoring box. If you are unable to deal with a shoring box, simply feed the pipe into the trench from above and use a rake to nestle it on the bottom. Next comes the process of backfilling. This is a crucial step. It is very important that the first foot of backfill be free from large rocks and flooded with water to ensure a safe environment around the pipes. Cleaning the rocks out of this layer of backfill can be accomplished with a homemade rock screen or simply by using sand. The remainder of the dirt can simply be pushed into the trench with your excavator. Once this is complete, the area can be raked, heated, and covered with straw. Now it is time to open the supply valves on the heat pump, turn on the system, and finally enjoy the financial and environmental benefits that only a self-installed geothermal heat pump kit from Ingram's Water and Air can supply.
When evaluating a purchase decision of this magnitude, a prudent consumer should ask how much the system will cost to operate. As an accountant by trade, I wanted to know exactly how much my new system was costing me. Thus, I opted to install an electricity usage gauge on the wires that feed my 4-ton Climate Master system. This gauge was purchased from an online hardware store and displays the number of kilowatt hours the heat pump draws as well as the cumulative operating cost. The accuracy of said gauge was verified by the bills from my utility company. The results were shockingly inexpensive. When determining how much a geothermal heat pump will cost to operate, it is important to understand that all houses are different in terms of physical characteristics such as wind exposure and insulation. However, the performance data of the geothermal heat pumps are consistent enough to get a worst case heating and cooling expense. The 4 ton Climate Master draws approximately 3600 watts, which translates into 3.6 kilowatts. In my home state of Maryland, electricity is about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Thus, the 4 ton Climate Master costs about 36 cents an hour to operate. Running the unit consistently would translate into $8.64 a day and approximately $260 a month. However, if the unit is properly sized and the house is reasonably well insulated, the heat pump will not run nearly this often. I found that my heat pump only needed to run 16 to 18 hours a day to keep my house at a comfortable 73 degrees during the winter. Thus, the most I spent on heating in one month was about $190 per, per heat pump. Naturally, the air conditioning costs have proven to be less expensive with my worst cooling bill at around $70. The geothermal kit from Ingram's Water and Air was an overwhelming success in terms of home comfort, economic rationale, and most importantly, environmental responsibility.